Welcome to this week's edition of Burning Earth Radio. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the subarctic. It is November 12th, 2016, and as I'm sure you are all aware that Donald Trump has been elected to the office of the President of the United States of America. This is a big change, folks, and I think it's time to take a moment to prepare ourselves for what might lie in the distance. I want to take a moment to reflect a little bit on the experience and the the shock that I've experienced uh, with Donald Trump getting elected. Indeed, it's a huge surprise, and the only positive that I can see coming out of it is that Hillary Clinton wasn't elected, and as you know, we here at Burning Earth Radio are mostly apolitical. We are no fans of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. The emotional response to Trump is a big factor. It was really unexpected, and it affected me pretty deeply. It affected a lot of people I know pretty deeply. Some people are viewing this as a positive shift in the world. Some people are viewing this as a negative shift in the world. And uh, right now, I think the most important attribute to look at is the fact that it totally destabilizes everyone's notion of stability, stability within themselves, stability within the world, and people having an idea of knowing what the future is going to hold for them, because now we have essentially no idea what's going to happen. There's been a lot of apologism for Trump in the news. Um, As soon as he was elected, the news was very quick to come out and start treating him as if he was the president of the United States, which indeed he is the president-elect of the United States now. So to me, it's interesting to see the media all of a sudden kind of get on board and to try to get the meme out there that we should all take Donald Trump seriously. And those of us who were against Trump from the very beginning are now kind of forced to reevaluate our opinions. Um, this is really interesting feature, this, this shift from the criticisms of Trump, the exposés that he's been in, involved with, all of the women, the, quote, misogyny, unquote, that we have no idea whether it's real or not. Um, we certainly do know a lot about his business dealings with Trump Steaks, Trump Vodka, Trump University, Trump golf courses, Trump hotels, Trump casinos. I mean, we know about his business dealings, and uh, this seems to be a non-issue for people, and people are seeming to have, people seem to have gotten into a situation where they're very quick to make excuses for all of these bad business dealings, and to uh, make excuses for the overall ethics of Trump, which is... uh, An ethics of conspiracy and an ethics of conology. I mean, this person is a con man, and it's very well known that he's a con man. He's been in bankruptcy four or five times, in and out of the courts, in and out of the banks. Even before he takes office, he's going to likely have to do with a lot of court proceedings. He was the first candidate for the presidency to not release his tax returns, precisely because of the fact that he paid no tax. So none of this is a surprise um, to me. It's interesting to think about the overall reaction to Trump um, and people's perception that Trump is an anti-establishment candidate. Let me tell you, folks, nothing could be further from the truth. Trump is not an anti-establishment candidate, though he ran on an anti-establishment platform. That's true, and he did come out and successfully attack Hillary Clinton, who is perhaps the most establishment person that we can think about, we have to look at his cabinet. We have to look at the people who he's involved with and the people who are supporting his campaign. Remember this quote, you are the average of the people that you surround yourself with. So in order to get an idea of what a Trump administration might look like, We only need to look at the people that Trump is surrounding himself with. We can take a look at some of his big campaign organizers, the the people involved in his transition team. 
we of course have now the big news story coming out that Mike Pence, the governor from Indiana, the fascist governor from Indiana, who wants to incriminate people who seek same-sex marriage licenses within the state of Indiana. Uh, we have people of the ilk of Pence. We also have Newt Gingrich uh, coming along for the ride, a long-term establishment politician from the Republican side, ex-Speaker of the House. We also have Jeff Sessions, Senator from Alabama, this very strong conservative who's been sort of rising in the ranks. We have Rudy Giuliani, the former mayor of New York City, who was well known for his corruption dealings and another another billionaire on the block, so to speak. We also have Chris Christie, the perpetrator of Bridgegate scandal in New Jersey. And we also have Ben Carson. So, I mean, we have a lot of these politicians who've been around for a while involved in the Trump campaign. And it's it's really surprising to me how people fail to realize that when Trump comes into office, you're not just going to get Trump. There is going to be a barrage of additional politicians, lackeys, uh, you know, do-gooders who are going to come into his administration and try and ride off of the power wave that Trump represents. Um, just the office of the president or the administration of the president, I think, I believe it's about 4,000 appointments that the administration has to make. So there's essentially 4,000 jobs out there where we are going to get hardcore conservative Republicans um, in positions of power throughout all institutions of government within the United States. So it's really important to recognize this as we move forward that Trump is not just Trump. Trump is a movement and Trump has very powerful backers. It's also interesting to look at the various cash injections which came into the Trump campaign near the end, um, particularly from the casino owner Sheldon Adelson, billionaire casino owner who I believe was well known for funding the Bush campaign and well known for funding the Romney campaign. He's back again and he has provided Donald Trump prior to the election very close coming up to the election, a massive cash injection of $25 million. So Sheldon Adelson can apparently afford to support Trump in a very serious way. So, I mean, this is establishment money as well, folks. I mean, make no mistake about it, that you are not going to get anything new with Trump. Overall, I think it's also important to not forget the campaign that Trump ran on this in addition to being an anti-establishment campaign it was also an anti-diversity campaign that's really important to remember folks going forward that trump does not represent you trump has brought back a lot of the very insidious race politics and has uh, instigated a lot of racial tensions within the united states a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety particularly within the Latin American community surrounding the threats of mass deportations of people who have arrived in the country illegally. He's also very unpopular with the African American community. Um, also going back, you know, looking at his endorsements, uh, we have endorsements from the KKK, a, a very prominent white a supremacist movement within the United States. So the, the, he ran essentially on a basis that a large portion of it was race politics. And uh, this racially motivated dialogue to me is, is very dangerous because it's bringing back a lot of the issues that I thought that the United States uh, as a country had uh, gotten over, particularly during the civil rights movements in the, in the 60s. You know, we have Martin Luther King coming out in the 60s and uh, giving us his beautiful vision of a united America, an America in which everyone, irregardless of race, creed or color, could make a way for themselves within the country. And again, 
going back to Trump, this is this is not what we see. Um, essentially, we're rolling back everything. We're rolling back women's rights. We're going to be rolling back gay rights. We're going to be rolling back rights for people who are mind, uh, impoverished in the country. We're going to be rolling back rights for all minorities. We're going to be rolling back rights on freedom of speech. We're going to be rolling back rights on freedom of the press. Trump says he wants to increase the libel laws or rewrite the libel laws so that he can't be sued or he can rather so that he can uh, sue those who come out and financially devastate those who are opposed to him and who are opposed to his authority. So this is a really scary thing, folks, to have this type of sentiment coming out, this reactionary sentiment, essentially. And uh, to me, I mean, Trump is the high risk candidate, you know, as opposed to Hillary Clinton, who was the low risk candidate. With Hillary Clinton, it was pretty obvious what we were going to get, folks, if she would have been elected, we were going to get more wars in the Middle East. We're going to get more anti-Russia politics, anti-Putin. You know, Hillary had come out saying just before the campaign that she wanted to uh, enforce a no-fly zone in Syria, which would have been a debacle, certainly, and could have led to a confrontation with Russia. It could have been escalation. We were certain that we were going to get more money in the political system, more currency flowing through the Clinton Foundation, very expected. So, and this is, you know, people didn't want this. You know, there was a strong push against this. People were tired of Hillary Clinton politics. You know, the woman had been in politics for over 30 years. And I mean, again, it's no surprise to see Trump coming out with the win here. Um, The vote for Trump is a high risk vote. It's very important to remember that America as a nation is willing to take a risk and they're taking their risk with Trump because people are so tired of establishment politics. They are so tired of the status quo. They're so tired of political correctness as an idea that they are willing to put everything on the line and go in on this guy who has never been in politics and really arguably doesn't know very much about the world. It's it's shocking sometimes to see the, the, the raw ignorance of Trump as a person revealed. Let's be serious, folks. Do you think Trump is going to sit down and read War and Peace? Do you think Trump is going to sit down and read Brave New World? Do you think Trump is going to educate himself on the rise of fascist power within the West and during World War, after World War I and coming up into World War II and the transition of Germany from the Weimar Republic into the fascist regime of Hitler. Do you think Trump is going to educate himself on Enlightenment philosophy? If you think so, think again, folks, because this man probably hasn't read a book within the last 20 years. So this is one of the things that really concerns me about Trump is his overall lack of knowledge uh, of what's going on in the world. To me, he's almost terrifyingly out of touch with reality. One of the issues which I find most dangerous and one of the themes of the the Burning Earth show, of course, is, is that of climate change. Trump believes that climate change is a fabrication, that there is no warming of the planet, that human beings could not at all influence the overall motions of climate. And uh, we're going to see this with Trump, that the deregulation of the petrochemical industry, the deregulation of big oil, Um, which is already pretty much very heavily deregulated. We're just going to see more of that with him. I mean, he one of the things I do believe he will do um, is he will grant all kinds of leniency regarding environmental issues. I would not at all be surprised to see that. And I verily, that's something within his power to do. He can do all this through the office of president. 
Whereas some of the other things he says that he wants to do through the office of his presidency, such as the mass deportations and the building of the wall and the uh, really the, the, the banning of the practice of Islam or the these kinds of things, I think it will be actually much harder to do, um, though they're still possible if he can manage to erode the last few remaining structures of government within the United States, if he can it really ensconce himself as a full autocrat, which I truly believe that he wants to do. So folks, the rollback of the environmental regulations is really scary because as many of you know, uh, who are following the show, climate change is a very serious problem. We have very serious warming in the Arctic this year, very slow refreezing of the Arctic sea ice. Um, up here in the far north, we've had very wide temperature aberrations, uh, up to 15 degrees C, almost 20 degrees C changes within a span of a week or two weeks. Um, these are unprecedented changes, which of course have to do with the destabilization of the jet stream and a warming of the Arctic overall, um, we're dealing with a completely different climate system. And Trump fails to realize this. Trump is wants to continue to push the notion of America, American energy independence uh, on a basis of fossil fuel technology. Trump is for coal. Trump is for big oil. And Trump is for the deregulation of environmental all environmental regulations and all environmental protections. Interestingly enough, uh, if we look at the current protests with the Dakota Access Pipeline up in North Dakota, I mean, we can see the corruption is there. I mean, we have the police coming out and squashing these protesters, beating these protesters, doing mass arrests of these protesters, which is very serious crime in my opinion that these people on their land they are recognized as being on their land and as sovereign on their land that the oil company can come in and simply put in their pipeline put it under the river uh the, the missouri river up there and uh go on as business as usual uh, couple of hundred protesters, a thousand protesters. It's it's nothing for these people. Um, they're in it for the money, folks. Uh, we have to realize this. And Trump is a boon for people like this. You really have to wonder the overall ethics of Trump and what he represents in terms of the direction of the country. So I would like to take a moment to address the emotional aspects of Trump coming into power. To me, it was not a real shock on the intellectual plane. I mean, we all knew and we all had accepted that there was a possibility that Trump could take the White House. And we had also speculated on what a Trump administration might look like. And people like me who tend to have a very progressive leaning, uh, I believe we just kind of put it in the back of our minds that, oh, well, this really isn't possible, that Trump is not really going to take power you know it's it seems just too farcical it, it just seems unrealistic somehow that someone that incompetent would raise to such a to really rise to the heights of power i mean you're looking at the rise of the new american fascist with trump so waking up on wednesday morning and taking a look at the news and seeing that trump had won was to me one of the most interesting moments of my life and it's certainly a moment i won't forget there was a lot of denial there was a lot of conflicted feelings within myself regarding what the implications of trump were not only for the climate but for human rights in general and uh, for progressive movements and for honestly dare i say it the movement of love and the movement of harmony on this planet uh, Trump is a big threat to this. Um, so for me to wake up and seeing the news, it was kind of this catch-22 where it was like, oh yeah, that was completely possible that Trump would win. Yet on the emotional level, it was like, oh no, like Trump has won the presidency. Like, what does this entail? You know, I literally felt that the entirety of the world was 
uh, went through this momentous change almost overnight. And uh, we entered into a very different looking future than the one that we had all expected. So with that, folks, I'm going to wrap up this first segment of uh, Burning Earth Radio. I think it's time for a break. And it was a pleasure having you along for the ride. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the show.